The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As-salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa sayyid al-mursaleen Abil Qasim Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-ghur al-mayamin wa al-anatullah ala a'adaihim ajma'in min al-an ila qiyam yawm al-deen. Allahum salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu al-dabdur. So, with regards to our journey, uh, the journey uh, of um, our Holy Prophet's uh, life, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We've reached to the point chronologically where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has left Mecca after uh, 13 uh, hard years uh, with the Quraysh and all his efforts for them to at least give him the freedom to express his uh, uh, beliefs and uh, pass the message. He travels to Medina and uh, from here also we have the beginning of the Islamic calendar where we calculate the years from Hijrah and uh, the Holy Prophet also we discussed this incident with the cave. Uh, now the Holy Prophet وسلم, are heading to Medina with Abu Bakr. And Amir al-Mu'mineen is left behind in Mecca. Now, there's certain uh, uh, jobs, assignments, tasks for Amir al-Mu'mineen. Uh, one of them is for him to um, protect Fatima al-Zahra salam, his mother Fatima bint Asad, and uh, was, I, I believe, a third Fatima as well. Amongst the Fawatim, were there three Fatimas? I do not remember the third. Mm. Uh, inshallah, if you could... Um, uh, inform me about that. So, um, the first task was f to return the amanat, the goods. Um, what would it be a proper word, amanat, in English here? Trust. The trust. Yeah. So, the, the trustees uh, that people left with the Holy Prophet, as known as Sadiq al Amin, people would trust him so much they leave things with him as like a bank. So, he, Amir al Mu'mineen salam, had to return them before. Uh, eventually leaving uh, with um, the Holy Fawatim. Uh, inshallah, if we can begin with Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and um, we can go through um, the events. Inshallah. Inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-ma'asameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ajma'ala 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 Yes, um, when uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi left Mecca for Medina, of course he stayed in the cave for three days until dust settled and so that they could uh, continue their journey without <coughs> Quraysh being on their trail. Amir Mumuni alayhi salam stayed behind he stayed uh, in his in the prophet's bedroom on his uh, bed as a decoy if you mm -hmm. like so that the prophet could uh, escape uh, uh, as uh, and um, after the um, um, after they discovered this of course there were some skirmishes <coughs> between the Warriors of Quraysh and Imam Ali alayhi salam. So they came <laughs> after Amir al-Mu'mineen? Yeah. Um, were, were, they, were they planning to assassinate Amir al-Mu'mineen since the Holy Prophet escaped? Um, well, they, um, they wanted to punish Amir al-Mu'mineen, at least in some instances they said they did punish, but mm. 
what happened according to some narrations that uh, <coughs> the first one who came forward um, to, to hit the Prophet thinking that he was a Prophet mm -hmm. was Amir Mu'min alayhi salam and Amir Mu'min stood up to him. The, the first one who came to him was Khalid ibn Walid and Amir Mu'min alayhi salam grabbed him by his arm and twisted his arm and firmly holding or rasping his hand so that he can make mm. uh, his sword, uh, he, make him to uh, let go of his sword and uh, it is said that he was screaming uh, in pain because Amir Mu'min was twisting his arm. So and he was known, he was known at that stage in his life, Amir Mu'min, was he known for his extraordinary well, power? Well, he certainly became known. <laughs> he <laughs> became known in that well, instance. But was it from that night? Um, Do we, uh, it's just um, quite out of curiosity just to know regarding yeah. uh, the recognition of the Qur'an <coughs> amongst the Quraysh, the, uh, Quraysh regarding uh, his extraordinary powers. Because yeah. of course, by the time we reach to Khaybar, yeah. which inshallah will cover, that, that shows truly... Yeah. Well, before Khaybar, before Khaybar it was in Badr and then in Uhud, in the battles of Badr and Uhud, uh, which shows the um, bravery um, and... Uh, uh, um, heroism that Imam Ali alayhi salam showed. Um, so that, yeah. But at least this is the first instance when he confronted Khalid ibn Walid and Khalid ibn Walid was uh, screaming in pain because Imam Ali was twisting his arm and he made him let go of his sword hmm. and, and he took his sword and he threatened him. So that really uh, demoralized the warriors of Quraysh hmm. at, at that instance. Um, and um, some narrations say they they wouldn't let him go. They sort of uh, uh, um, um, kept him there. Some narrations say that they said, "Okay, we leave, let him go. Uh, we are we are after someone else. We're not after him. We're after Muhammad. We need to not to waste time and sort of try to um, see which direction he's uh, he, he's gone." Uh, in fact, they said to him, "Where is Muhammad?" He said, uh, "You didn't want him here, so he's left." You didn't leave me to watch over Muhammad. Uh, why are you asking me? Uh, so there, there was some uh, th that kind of uh, strong conversation between them, if you like. Mm. Um, so, and they um, they were very anxious m not to lose time, and immediately sort of rush make decision as to which which way to go. And of course, they got some guides, if you like, or those people who can track traces, trackers, you know, trackers if you like. So they went after that. At least in that instance, in his confrontation with Khalid bin Walid, who was one of the uh, um, uh, warriors of the um, kuffar, of the mm. disbelievers of Quraysh, um, um, he really, Imam Ali alayhi salam gave him a good lesson to Khalid bin Walid and, and um, uh, he, uh, he humiliated him uh, in that instance. At least in that case, it showed he, uh, he became known uh, Imam Ali al -Salam for his bravery. <laughs> and of course, there is another instance when he was leaving uh, Medina. Uh, he was confronted with someone else. Uh, probably will come to it. And um, there was a confrontation as well. And again, they saw the bravery of Imam Ali al -Salam in that instance. But as you mentioned, um, the following day, he had um, three tasks to do, Imam Ali alayhi salam, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi had instructed him to do. One is to return back all the goods that um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi had been given at, for safekeeping and trust, to return them to their owners, and uh, any, to settle any debts that the Prophet had, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, uh, to go to the creditors and make sure everything is sorted. And the third thing is to get all the women and children that uh, the Prophet's uh, family, if you like, and as well as uh, Imam Ali's mother, uh, Fatima bint Asad, um, to take them with him and, <coughs> um, you know, head for Medina. So it wasn't so just uh, Fawatim, it was um, women and children left behind yeah, as the well. Yeah, the wives of the Prophet, um, uh, um, if you like, uh, well, uh, at that time he didn't have any wives, uh, so the wives wouldn't be correct because uh, uh, <coughs> Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam had passed away and um, he didn't marry um, um, in, in Mecca, if you like, after 
uh, the death of uh, mm. Sayyid Khadija Salam Allah alayha. Uh, but he, he married in, 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 in he remarried in Medina, um, but um, so yes, he wanted to. They want to get the, if you like, women and children uh, who were they were with him. So he got them with him, and um, uh, that was on route to to Medina. So his main his, his task in there was um, to settle the debts and to give the um, any goods that had they had given any. Uh, uh, items that were given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for safekeeping to return to their owners. Um, and he declared that um, he used to go around or stand in Mecca and declare that whoever uh, wants anything from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he should come to me so that I can uh, settle these uh, um, with him. Um, and he, he, he made that his job. And of course, uh, uh, and he did declare that after I finish this, I am um, leaving um, Mecca for Medina, um, and of course this was unique in the sense that um, Imam Ali alayhi salam, all the Muslims who were persecuted in Mecca, they left Mecca secretly mm. at night, yeah. one by one, so that they don't uh, draw okay. attention. Yes, okay? they had to leave all their belongings there. Um, that's why, I mean, for future reference, mm. um, all their their belongings and property and wealth and so on of the Muslims who were persecuted in Mecca were confiscated by Quraysh. Okay. Um, we, we need to remember this, so inshallah, when we talk about uh, the beginning of the Battle of Badr, mm -hmm. we see the causes, uh, the reasons for um, some of the actions that were taken. Uh, so they had to leave in secret. They couldn't carry um, their property or, or their belongings with, with them. Um, the Prophet did the same thing, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He left at night secretly. But Imam Ali alayhi salam, he left, uh, if you like, in broad daylight and um, openly. He declared. He announced it as he well. Announced it. He said, and this was a challenge to Quraysh. And this was a challenge to Quraysh. And okay. that's why, of course, they pursued him and they tried to assassinate Imam Ali alayhi salam en route to uh, Medina, <coughs> which it showed in that instance. It showed <coughs> and Amir al-Mu'mineen was all by himself or he had any other companions? Uh, no, he didn't have any other companions. All by himself with all the women and with children? The, with the women and children. Um, SubhanAllah. So one would think if he was all by himself, it would be um, a very important reason to leave secretly as well. But by, by announcing it, does this show that Amir al-Mu'mineen, because of his uh, exemplary <coughs> bravery and also <coughs> extraordinary power, which was proven on the battlefield, uh, he did not worry. He wasn't um, worrying the fact that, oh, they're going to come after us. He knows he can control the situation and protect the children and uh, the women. And, and would this show, is there anything more to this other than that? Um, well, there are um, various um, n narrations. In one instance, um, share, share with us some. Uh, in one instance, uh, uh, Quraysh, they came up with a, with a plan to discredit Imam Ali and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa in the sense that they said um, to one of them that you go and make false claims um, uh, that you'd given something to the Prophet and you want it back. Um, and um, so he did. Um, 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 so Imam uh, Ali alayhi salam, someone uh, Could you remind by the me? name Sorry, could you remind me which uh, book are you quoting us from? Um, there are various uh, books. I mean, this was is uh, uh, Jawahir al but it's uh, the various. Uh, it's a compilation of various hadiths, if you like, okay. um, and instances, and narrations, and so on. <coughs> um, that it is said that um, uh, Abu Sufyan and others, they said instructed Wabil, uh, sorry, Umair ibn Wabil al um that go and make a false claim. That you'd given uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam eighty miskal, 
of gold. Um, and that now that he's, uh, he's fled Mecca and you are his representative here, yeah. uh, I want you to give that um, gold back to me. Um, and I have witnesses for that. Um, uh, and of course, um, um, Imam Ali al -Salam checked and his name didn't appear in the list. And he said that my witnesses were Abu Jahl, Akrama, um, Aqba ibn Abi Mu'id, Abu Sufyan, and Hanzala. So, um, if you like, well-known people, Abu Jahl, his son Akrama, Abu Sufyan, Hanzala, and so on. Uh, leading people of Quraysh. Um, and um, these are my witnesses. I've given this gold to the Prophet. Now that you are saying that you want to return back all the um, items that have been given to the Prophet for safekeeping, I want you to give me back that 80 misqal of gold. Uh, the Imam Ali alayhi salam knew that this was a trick. Um, and um, they want to discredit him and his, uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And he said, okay, let's go by the Kaaba and um, uh, bring your witnesses so that um, I can ask them. So Omer came and the witnesses came and he asked um, Abu Sufyan, he said, um, did you see that uh, Omer gave him 80 misqal of gold? He said, yes. He said, what time was that? And Abu Sufyan said it was about sunset. Oh, by the way, before Imam Ali, uh, Imam Ali asked Umair uh, as to what time it was that he gave them the, the gold to. Um, uh, and they were all giving different answers yeah. because obviously it was a lie. That's right. So, so they didn't he get said by it. sunset. He asked Handala and he said uh, at the t mm. midday. And he asked. Um, um, uh, Aqba and he said it's, uh, it, it, it was in the afternoon and he asked Akrama and um, he said it was about sunrise. So everyone was giving a different answer uh, about the time that Omer gave the money to um, uh, the Prophet And of course in this way and Omer was standing and he got these witnesses one by one to come and tell the Imam Ali as to uh, when was this done, at what time, and Omer could see that they were giving different uh, timings. And Imam Ali turned to him and he said, why, has, why have you gone pale? And of course he said that, to be honest, um, they instructed me to do this. In fact, they gave me money to say this. Um, and, um, and he apologized for this and um, he, it is said that he declared the two uh, shahada, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu an Oh really, did they? Oh, I wasn't uh, aware of that. Umair ibn Wa'il. Okay. Uh, al Thaqafi. Subhanallah. Um, Allahumma salli ala um, Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And, and he said that um, I can see your honesty and of course the honesty of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. We know that he was the Sadiq al-Ameen, mm. uh, the trustworthy and the, the thing, food. That, that, that's what's staggering about that he, his enemies were aware of his attributes. Yes. They were aware of what kind of a human being he is, but still they denied him. Unfortunately, yes, they knew that. They hadn't seen anything wrong, absolutely anything wrong from him. It's just <coughs> that uh, uh, basically they were seeing that he's coming with a different religion and... Uh, they were and looking at their interest. They put their interest over yeah. anything else. Yes. That's it's the problem. It, it was if, if, if it was a religion that would not have an effect on their economical uh, on the uh, in the economical side of things, they might have even accepted it or left it at least to be as it is. Uh, unfortunately, it's 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 not not only that. Of uh, course, it came again because Islam was against a lot of the the culture and traditional uh, practices. Uh, 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 the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa uh, told them that um, say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and um, you will become leaders and your religion that is Islam will become the leading religion so you, you even materially you don't have anything to lose um, unfortunately they didn't I would say they didn't think straight um, the, it, it was a win-win 
there was nothing to lose. Yeah, they were they were going to lose. They would they would lose the I the idols that they had in uh, in the Kaaba, Lat and uh, uh, Mina Minat mm. and uh, uh, and so on. Lat wal Azza wal Mina. Other than that, they would have uh, gained everything. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, eventually they did. But after, if you like, the battles of um, uh, <coughs> uh, Badr and Uhud and so mm. on, uh, and after the conquest of Mecca, uh, now we're going, we're going ahead, after the conquest of Mecca, they, they saw the behavior of the Prophet ﷺ. They thought that he will, uh, he will cause a slaughter in Mecca, given the fact that he has the upper hand in Mecca, but the Prophet ﷺ didn't do anything, and they saw still his good behavior, his honorable behavior, uh, and his conduct towards them, and he forgave them despite all the wrong things that they had done to him, all the killings that they had caused. Uh, they killed Hamza, they persecuted the Muslims throughout, and confiscated their properties. Um, but despite that, he forgave them. So eventually they, they embraced Islam, if you like, but uh, uh, some of them still had this um, arrogance. Uh, of course. Not to Which can be seen it. even today. Yes. Um, okay, so, so after this, Amir al-Mu'mineen should be preparing to leave. Once everything was sorted, taken care of, all the responsibilities, anything hanging, <coughs> now Amir al-Mu'mineen is getting ready to leave to go to Medina. What happens? Um, well, obviously they they left, if you like, Mecca. As they didn't block block his path. They let him go. They they. Because he left in the middle of the day. You said yes. He they um, um, given the uh, station of Amir Mumini alayhi salam, hmm. um, and the fact that um, they have already lost once in the sense that they lost. They didn't manage to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, so they demoralized there. They didn't manage to find him. Um, uh, so they didn't want to openly fight Imam Ali alayhi salam. So when he left Mecca, he was, uh, uh, there was an assassination attempt against the, the Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, by a group uh, leading by uh, one of the, if you like, warriors of Quraysh. But Imam Ali could uh, repel that uh, uh, attack and uh, continue his, his way to uh, Medina. But of course, this took place um, after uh, the Prophet ﷺ had arrived at the outskirts of Medina. Uh, if you like, had arrived at a village called Quba. And uh, they stayed um, in the tent uh, of a woman called Umm Ma'bad. And, um, they waited, uh, uh, the Prophet and Abu Bakr together, and the Prophet decided to wait until Imam Ali arrives. Abu Bakr said to him, he might not come for another month. Um, so the people of Medina are very happy. They've reached, the news, news has reached uh, hmm. that you've arrived. And so let's go. And Imam, the Prophet said, I will not enter Medina without my brother Ali. Um, he why would he say that? Why would he say that? Why would who? Yeah, why, why wouldn't the Holy Prophet enter Medina without Amir al-Mu'mineen What was so important that he had to enter with Imam Ali? A number, Ali number of reasons. Uh, one of them, at least um, the Prophet ﷺ said it, is that he is the one who protected uh, me and shielded me and he sacrificed himself for my sake. Um, uh, he put himself in grave danger, in imminent danger. Um, uh, and um, he knew that 40 warriors, the best warriors that Quraysh had to offer, mm. 40 of them were coming that night with their swords and they're going to attack, attack him. <coughs> and yet he stayed in my place allowing me to leave um, with such a huge sacrifice and imminent danger of being um, ki killed, uh, at, at least I could um, um, return courtesy by waiting for him uh, until he arrives so, so that we both arrive uh, in Medina, in Yathrib. Is that the only reason 
why he would wait before entering the city or is there another reason as well to well, emphasize uh, yes. something very important with yeah. regards to Islam <coughs> itself? Yes, um, this is the reason he gave, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave um, to Abu Bakr. And of course, I want to say that uh, is, um, um, Abu Bakr was, it is said that he, he didn't like, you know, all this weight that Imam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving to, the, to Imam Alayhi yes. Salaam. And he insisted that he, they should leave. So you can imagine that he is, he is telling the Prophet what to do, whereas yeah. he should be there uh, taking instructions from the Prophet Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi mm -hmm. because he knows that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi or at least he should know, mm -hmm. that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi doesn't do anything except from, according to instructions from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Even staying at, at Quba or leaving for Medina is, <coughs> is uh, according to what Allah has instructed him. Um, whatever, which is the sunnah of the Prophet, whatever the Prophet does <coughs> is in line with the with the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so, um, yeah, Abu Bakr was uh, not happy with this. He kept insisting and, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi uh, said to him that he is not leaving. He is staying until Imam Ali arrives. And um, so this angered Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr left the Prophet there in Quba and he headed for Medina. Um, okay. And uh, I feel with regards to this, I just uh, wanted us to touch a couple of um, um, issues here. So we see, we see the stressfulness of Abu Bakr. Now, we, discussing the biography of the Holy Prophet, his lifetime and his mission, we see that the Holy Prophet throughout his time um, always tries to emphasize and show to the people that after me, my successor is Amir al-Mu'mineen. And how I see it is that it was so important for him to enter Medina with Amir al-Mu'mineen as a statement to yeah. the people. Yeah. And Abu Bakr wanted that. So it can be, that shows. Now, if there is a conspiracy against the Holy Prophet in Ahlul Bayt when did it start? Because you can see the signs that the plotting did not start at the last era, at the last years of the Holy Prophet. It could have been from the very beginning. And it's quite disturbing. Now, whatever we can expose, inshallah, we'd like to expose it. Because at the end of the day, we want to expose the truth. And be objective where we have to be objective. And obviously, we have to give credit when it's due to give credit, not being biased or anything. So Abu Bakr leaves, he goes to Medina. That doesn't happen, he won't enter. And we'll go discuss about Medina, inshallah, we'll go into that because that's quite exciting as well. Now, Amir al Mu'mineen left uh, Mecca and he's on his way. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the Quraysh, they try, they send people to stop him. He fought them back. He continues. The Holy Prophet وسلم, is in uh, Quba and he's waiting. And inshallah, we're going to discuss about Amir al Mu'mineen arriving to Masjid al Quba and uh, entering Medina, inshallah, and we'll go through there. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet throughout from the moment that uh, the first revelation took place, he used every opportunity to show that Imam Ali is along with me, he is supporting me, and he is the one who is going to lead the Ummah as my successor. He is going to lead the Ummah after me. So the Prophet Sallallahu he used every opportunity to show, to pass, to um, express this, uh, and uh, uh, show that message to the people. Even by, even by just arriving at the city of Medina along with Imam Ali and rather than anyone else.